Hello, hello, brothers and sisters. We're happy to welcome you to a new week. We're happy to share a lot of uh, content and news with you. We thank you very much uh, for the last video. You guys really did what we're asking you to do. You shared the video with a lot of your friends and family, and we can see uh, the numbers that are going up. We are really leading a revolution, and we have a lot of enemies. The enemies may be in Africa, but they have their agents very close to America. Our revolution should fail. We try to share content from brothers and sisters who send us information far and wide. But it looks like even YouTube, the channel we use to distribute a lot of this news, tries to censor us. They make it difficult for us to share our information. So we're telling you the only way we can bypass the censorship of YouTube is for you, our viewers, to take this video, share it with a lot of your friends. Don't just sit and watch it alone. Share it with your friends, then tell your friends also to share it. Besides, if you want us to have a revolution and the numbers to go up, tell more people about this video and our channel, then tell them also to share and subscribe to this channel. Because this is the only way we can expose this message to you. As you can see, Africans who are talking about movies, entertainment, YouTube doesn't really care about them. But we are talking about a subject that is really dear to the hearts of the average African. Africa is a rich continent. Why are our people living in misery? It is because their leaders connive with Western powers to steal the resources of our people, which is why our people live in misery. This is a truth, and we want to be telling this truth every week, but it looks like a lot of people don't want us to tell this truth. It looks like a lot of African governments are really conniving even with YouTube to tell them not to share a lot of our stuff because <laughs> the content is too hard, too hard, hard to hold. But it's a waste of time. We continue to share the messages. It's a brave new world. We know how to handle a lot of the new information technologies. We're going to use these technologies to continue to share our messages. And we encourage you to join us and help us to share these messages. Share the videos. So I cannot help by telling you, continue sharing. The more you share, the more the message will get wider and wider and more and more people will be seeing what we are doing. It is your message and we want to just be your voice because if we are your voice, then your message will be heard far and wide. We have a lot of news stories for you today, a lot of news. We're going to begin the news sweep by looking at Africa this week. Africa this week, we we'll go to Ambazonia. Ambazonia is uh, part of uh, La Refugio Cameroon. They are breaking away because they've decided to declare their independence again. They used to be independent, but they were tricked into joining La Republique, and they've been suffering from marginalization ever since. We have a video from Dr. Simon Munzu, who actually is not really friendly to Ambazonians, but we're really surprised that on this occasion, in this video, he tried to tell the truth about the politics of this part of the world. So we'll just give you a minute to watch what Dr. Simon Munzu is saying. More or less, what it is. But let me state in a nutshell that the Anglophone problem as I see it describes the phenomenon whereby for about 56 years since the unification of Southern Cameroons and Republic du Cameroon on October 1, 1961, to form a new nation, the Federal Republic of Cameroon, successive regimes in Yaoundé have progressively and systematically dismantled the Anglophone heritage relating to the conduct of public affairs and extended the corresponding Francophone heritage and system of governance to the Anglophone Northwest and Southwest regions of the country. And to have done this without adequate consultation with the consent of the people of these two regions. Dr. Simon Mozu used to take the position of being a federalist. He's the kind of guy they say, it is chop soya, it is chop for right, it is chop for left. 
He's the kind of guy who is not loyal to anybody. He's disloyal. So he is a politician. He speaks with both sides of his mouth. So we just want to tell you that for the first time, this individual <laughs> is forced to really tell the truth in the video. For so many years, Anglophones have been marginalized by La République du Cameroon, and he was able to tell the truth about this marginalization, which is really the root cause of the civil strife taking place now in this part of the world. So this civil strife has really taken a lot of lives. Last week, we talked about uh, the siege of uh, Bamenda. This week, it looks like a lot of militarization is going on in this region. They call it the Operation Keep Bamenda Clean. Bamenda is a very clean city and nice city where most of our people live. So when you tell us you want to keep Bamenda clean, you want to sweep all the guys you call separatist soldiers. But these restoration forces are freedom fighters. They believe in freedom. They believe in self-determination. So no matter the number of soldiers the poor BR regime puts in this part of the world, the people of Ambazonia will continue to protest and they will continue to fight back. Because even though they don't have good weapons, even though the international community is not supporting them, they've decided to take the fight to the enemy. They don't want to just sit and be killed. If they must die, they don't want to die like sheep taken to slaughter. They want to fight back, and that's exactly what they are doing. So we really applaud them. With meager resources, they are really trying to do something with their lives. So that's much of what you really hear today. Like Bamenda is full now with so many soldiers from La Republic, you have militias, and you even have also uh, vigilantes. Uh, vigilantes are people who are criminals. Who, uh, these criminals have been recruited by the guy who calls himself uh, the Minister of Interior, uh, Atanganji, Paul Atanganji. He recruits some of these hoodlums and bad elements to look for the restoration fighters. They either kill them or tell La Republic's militia where these uh, restoration forces are, then they will kill them. But in the video that I'm going to share with you, unfortunately for these uh, vigilantes who have been paid by Paul Atanganji, the Ambassador Restoration Forces cut them. Then as a way to punish them, to make sure that they don't do this again, they ask them to swim in mud. We do not really like the practice, but sometimes you have to really tell your people that we are fighting a war with an enemy who is very wicked. You cannot just be taking secrets and telling the enemy to come and kill our people. Because without the restoration forces, the BR militia would have really wiped off all the males who live in this part of the world. And besides, the way God punishes uh, people, you can really see that these guys are really fighting. Then, of course, in uh, Libya, where we have our famous uh, Fiu Marshal, Fiu Marshal was really able to vanquish so many La Republic soldiers who went there to fight. You even see a uh, newspaper headline showing the way over 150 La Republic soldiers were killed last week because they went and tried to invade Le Bialem and Phil Marshall was really ready for them. And you can really see uh, uh, the news write-ups in the newspapers. It was really a terrible humiliation. We know that a lot of soldiers and militia guys are dying in Ambazonia, but back in Central or South province, their people don't even know they have died. So you go to war and you never come back? Well, that's what is happening. The military of La Republic is not willing to tell their families that these people have really died a long time ago. The soldiers have lost their lives fighting for Paul Bia, fighting a meaningless war. And I think Ambazonia had some support this week. The U.S. government is also putting more pressure on the Bia regime to change its ways. The senators, U.S. senators, made a resolution where they condemn. In fact, when I read that resolution, it looks like the Ambazonians wrote that revolution, a resolution because it was really one-sided. It saw the BR government as the problem in this conflict. Even though once in a while, some elements of the Ambazonian Restoration Forces commit some crimes, but the blame was heaped heavily on the militia of La Republique du Cameroon. The US senators were saying that they, they are killing people a lot, and they wanted to censure them so that there should be a ceasefire. Then they wanted them to observe all the rules of war so that things can go well. Okay? So we ask them to do this. And if they can really put pressure on this government, it's like the taming of the tiger. The tiger is running wild, so it needs to be tamed. 
and they think they need to tame this BI guy because he's just killing people every day. And we think even uh, Antonio Guterres of uh, the UN, the Secretary General of the UN, he himself, I saw <laughs> a comedy. In fact, a guy uh, sent me uh, a cartoon showing that uh, Antonio Guterres is tired of uh, Paul Bia, and now he wants to dig into the root causes of this conflict. The root causes of this conflict are very, very apparent. Okay? You can really see them. You don't need to dig a whole lot to see them. The problem is they are social, political, and economic. Anglophones are tired because they have been annexed, and now they have been marginalized. So they are living just like second-class citizens in their own country. They have their homeland. They cannot live in their homeland in peace. They are constantly being harassed and killed by forces of poor beer. So this is not fair. When matters got into a head, they decided to take the fight to the enemy because they were tired of being killed for no good reason. We hope the U.S. can do something to tame the tiger known as uh, Paul Bia. So this will really put some peace back in this part of the world. But it looks like so long as they don't tame this tiger, there will be no peace in that part of the world. Because even the rules of engagement, they're really wrong. Because when you even look at what is happening today uh, in La Republic itself, Maurice Camto, Maurice Camto was released uh, many months ago after he had stayed in jail for over nine months. So this time, Maurice Camto has decided to challenge the poor Bia regime. This time is what he calls, Bia must go finally. This message has really upset the Bia regime. The Bia regime now says, okay, a motion that was probably in the constitution of 1996, now they want to create a regional council elections. Elections for what? It's another fake opportunity, fake democracy. Democracy doesn't exist in this part of the world. You're going to create an election, organize it to deceive people again. Well, who are you going to deceive? Maurice Camptona is saying, before regional elections can be held on September 22nd of this month, he wants all the Cameroonians in La Republic to rise against the government of Paul Bia. Enough is enough, and he wants to challenge his government this is the final departure of Paul Bia, according to Maurice Camto of MRC Party. As a result, <laughs> most of uh, the soldiers and uh, politicians who are beholden to Bia decided to challenge uh, Maurice Camto. Atanganji, for one, has decided that he will not allow Maurice Camto to even uh, protest. Even though constitutionally, Maurice Camto has a right to protest in La Republic of Cameroon. But because this is a government that doesn't respect the constitution, they treat it like toilet paper. So Maurice Camto will be prevented from protesting. So when we look at the whole Maurice Camto game, he's linking the Banzina cause to his uh, fortunes because he's trying to get big crowds. We think Maurice Camto is doing the wrong thing. We know a lot of people su support Maurice Camto, but we think this is not the way you lead a revolution. Either you decide that you want to kick the poor BIA regime out, or you keep quiet. Look at what happened in Mali. Is that the way the people kicked out Ibrahim Buba Kaita? No. They just have to rise. You don't have to announce when you're going to start protesting. When you do that, you're giving notice to your enemy. So that's a wrong strategic move. Okay? That's not the way you plan things. Do you think the Mali Malians gave notice to President Kaita, when they were going to protest against him? No. They were doing their thing without asking him for permission until things got into a crescendo. And now Kaita, the president, fell. So that's the same thing that Maurice Camto can do in La Republique. Either he wants to be president and lead the revolution, or he should just sit quietly. Because what he's doing now is just like a child who doesn't understand dictatorship. You cannot un topple this BR government by just making noise on the streets. They will send soldiers to come and pick you up, and that will be the end of your protest. So you need to really educate the people so that they know what the issues are before this can happen. So when we look at Maurice Camto, we just think that he's just being naive. And we're sorry to say this, because we know on the 22nd of September, the forces of La Republic, all their politicians and their hangers-on, will not let Maurice Camto protest. They will stop everybody, because they will know that the people are going to come out on the 22nd. So Bia will flood the street with a lot of soldiers. 
to prevent the people from even coming out. We already can tell you the end game. <laughs> so Maurice Camto is just wasting his time, okay? Have you heard the latest healthcare news? There's been a medical programming breakthrough. Let's go to Ali and Ron for more. Thanks, Seb. A Good Samaritan is offering Alexia HTC, a new EMR EHR to doctors for free. Certainly this free offer will shake things up in the medical software industry. Alexia HTC is a David pitting itself against the Goliaths, Epic, Surmer, and Meditech, which are old and cost too much money. What happens if you figure out how to build a new EMR EHR on the web for pennies on the dollar? You give it away to the suffering physicians for free. Want to learn more about how these two powerhouse solutions will help you win more business? Schedule a demo below. In just minutes, Alexia HTC can help you access a patient record, enter an order, write a note, prescribe a medication, generate a charge, and create a super bill. Plus, Alexia Care Corporation the vendor of the new web application offers full customer service and training support free of charge. Who can beat that? So from Ambazonia, we're going to move now to Angola. This morning, we saw notices of uh, police br brutality in Angola. We've covered Angola many times on this show, and especially the corruption of uh, the Dos Santos uh, family. We covered that extensively, and we've been following that up. Since then, the country is really going through a lot of trials, but it looks like uh, police brutality has really been a, sto a, a popular story this week, and we want to draw your attention to it. Police officers should know that the citizens have the power. Do not brutalize the citizens, because when you do this, you're making a mistake, and the people know that they have their rights and they know their rights. So we're telling the president of Angola, keep this police in check and let them not continue brutalizing people. It's not a good thing. From Angola now, we're going to move to Chad. Okay, Chad is also a French colony. We've covered Chad many times on this show. Right now, the person who really leads Chad is called uh, Idris Deby Itno. This week, we noticed that um, there is a form of rapprochement between Chad and Israel. Hmm, why is uh, PM Netanyahu, 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 what's he doing with Chad? What does he want? Okay, we're going to dig into this and let you know next time because we're already noticing there's something fishy. We're going to let you know what is happening between Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, and Idris uh, Deby of Chad. We're going to dig and we'll tell you what the interests of Israel are in this part of the world. Maybe Netanyahu needs uh, military support because that's the best thing Israel offers to African countries, nothing more. They cannot offer them anything else but uh, military hardware. Mm -hmm. It's the same way they send all these mercenaries. The Israeli government was the one who sent people to train uh, the guys in Cameroon, the B. And the guy even lost his life in an aircraft accident in Cameroon. So those guys too are just like, uh, Shylock. They just need a pound of flesh from Africans. Okay, from there we we'll move now to Congo DRC. Congo DRC is also a favorite country of ours because it was one of those early countries in Africa, the countries that became democratic, and we saw the way democracy was derailed. When democracy was derailed, it was because the Prime Minister Patrice Emery Lumumba was killed in cold blood by Belgian mercenaries. For a long time, if those who know the history of uh, the Congo, Congo used to be a big, large African kingdom. And it had, Congo is probably the richest country in Africa. King Leopold of Belgium decided to monopolize this part of the world. All the resources of Congo became his. And he, he was just like a colossus. They, they would force Congolese people to work for nothing then they would take all the resources of Congo to Belgium. When Congo obtained flag independence, Patrice Emery Lumumba really wanted a country free of colonial domination. And for that, he paid dearly with his life because Mobutu Seseko sold him to his Belgian masters. And the, and the way they killed him, they put him in acid, 
But today, Juliana Lumumba, the daughter of uh, the former president of Congo DRC, came out now and started complaining about the death of her father. So it was only really sad. What did the Belgian say? Oh, the Belgian government said, okay, we're going to give you a tooth retain of uh, Lumumba. So you kill this guy and all you have to offer his family is a tooth. Oh, what a shame, colonial masters. What a shame, B B the Belgian government. What a shame. This is what you're offering. Are you not really ashamed to be killing people for their own resources? So these Belgians are just like highway bandits. They come to your country, they kill you, take everything you have. But it looks like uh, the government of Congo DRC has to still deal with this uh, Belgian government. So we would have preferred that they really sever ties with this government because the government has done the people wrong. They derailed their democracy. And we also saw another story also in Congo DRC concerning the Belgian government. You have a mixed woman, women of mixed uh, heritage. I think their mothers were Congolese and their uh, fathers were Belgians. They were arrested and taken away. So now they are asking for reparations from the Belgian government. So this too just shows you the negative role the Belgian government has played in this part of the world. The Belgian government has always had a very negative colonial history in Africa. We will not spend a lot of time talking about it here, but we just want to put this in context so you can understand. Let's get it on. If you're searching for a house, call up my man Prince O'Jone, the best in real estate. Take it from your guy's shape. When I say his services are the best in the states, where he's born, he even take care of your tax forms, fat refunds. So come, get your business done. Consultations, financial organization, fast processing, no waiting. This man is amazing. The Prince. Now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. One, one, Next, we we'll move to Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast is really hot, 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 hot. <laughs> Alassane Ouattara, Draman Alassane Ouattara, he's still on with his third, third term project, but already we have other guys who are contending. Henry Conan Bidier also has declared his uh, candidacy and his people are also jockeying for power. Then of course, Guillaume Soro, who used to be part of the armed struggle in that country, the guy who really made it possible for Ouattara to even gain power. He too has cleared all the legal hurdles and he's ready now to run for president. So he, he has been able to man maneuver from France, paid all his dues, and now he wants to really run for president. So there's going to be so much competition in the political space in Ivory Coast, the way we've been telling you. So we know that things will not all go well. So if you keep, if keep watching our show, we'll continue filling you in with the way things are going. From Ivory Coast, we're going to move now to Mali. Mali is a story we've been carrying on for so many weeks now, but there's some kind of uh, disagreement over the period of transition between the military junta and the M M5 politicians. But we hope they're gonna sort this out pretty soon. It looks like um, instead of 18, 24 months, the junta should probably take less time to stay there. They should pass power on to the civilians. So we think the, the junta is gonna sort things out with the M5 uh, politicians very soon. We hope for the best for the people of Mali. Next, we're gonna to move to Nigeria. Nigeria is uh, an area to where we have some big stories. Uh, this week, we saw a lot of news about uh, Aliko Dangote. We've covered Aliko Dangote many times on this show. He's a very, very successful uh, African entrepreneur, a, a, a big time uh, visionary. He started his business in the area of uh, farming. Then now he's moving to oil. We hear he's building the biggest oil refinery in Africa, starting in Nigeria. But already his business is really going from one country to another. So now he's become like a multinational corporation. <laughs> when we used to hear about multinational corporations, they used to be European organizations. But this time we have an African who owns uh, a multinational corporation and we're really proud to have an African. Just imagine if we had over 55 
Aliko Dangote is in Africa. What a beautiful place Africa will be because what he's doing is bringing jobs and of course he's also a philanthropist. So we like to talk good things about people who do good things. Then on a <laughs> funny note, well, there was also a story about uh, Aisha Buhari. It looks like uh, some Nigerians were making fun of uh, the daughter's wedding to another Nigerian. <laughs> so she was not really happy with those comments. So she was just telling people that leave my family alone. And But the people have to express themselves. We as Africans have to be comfortable with democracy. Let people speak. Whenever you don't want people to speak, it creates problems. So we like to censor people. Let us always let people speak and say what they have to say. And we always try to hide things. For example, now in La Republic, you see what is happening in the north of uh, the far north. Aijo's people are really suffering because like the mayor, uh, the, uh, Lamido, on one of the uh, northern places, was just complaining of floods. Can the government help him? It looks like the government is not even prepared to help him. The government of La Republic doesn't really care about northerners. Since Aijo uh, disappeared, the people have really been forced to fend for themselves. Nobody is helping them. And we really feel sorry for these people because we know they are nice people. We love them and we extend our greetings to them. We just feel sorry that a lot of bad things are happening to them. Also in the north, this week, we also heard about uh, the killing of over six people. Some of them were injured by the Boko Haram uh, uh, vigilantes. So this is not really good. So the government cannot really do much. They have soldiers everywhere, but we've always said on this show that militarization cannot really solve the problem we face in most African countries. What we need to do is to come to a political solution. Sit on the table, even if you don't agree with somebody, if the person is your brother or your sister, you guys need to share resources. You need to sit together and look for common ground. But it looks like most of the political leaders in Africa, they take their advice from European capitals. Instead of bringing their people to sit on the table and negotiate, no, they prefer to treat their people like slaves. They don't believe because they have big guns, they'll use those big guns to suppress uh, dissension. That's a big mistake because an idea is very, very powerful. You can kill the people, you can kill the messenger, but you cannot kill the message. The message will continue reverberating in the African space. It will echo and echo and go far and wide, which is what we try to educate most of these leaders so that they can understand the way things work in their country. We think we've come to the end of the show. So just look forward to terrible things happening on September 22nd in the Republic of Cameroon. So we think we've come to the end of the show. Thank you very much for watching. But we're telling you to continue sharing. Share all these videos. Share the videos and let people know about our channel. YouTube is not helping us. They are suppressing us. But we just want to complain to you, our people, that help us to work around this problem. The only way you can help us to work around the problem is by sharing the video with your friends. Tell them to subscribe, 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 subscribe. God bless you. Amat Favor is an African store by the neighborhood of Bezville in back of Maryland's farm. It's been a wonderful year for the past two to three years we have in this African store here and it's helping us and actually it's, it's a good place for us to come and give us support and do some shopping here. The price are reasonable and most of the stuff you can have is universal. One thing I love about this store, they are very consistent and they treat the customers very, very well. You come here, you see everything that, is, that you will need for your house. Express Driving School is the place for excitement of fast-track driver education. Driver education, drug and alcohol testing, driver counseling, bilingual translation. For all your MVA needs, contact us. John F. Abbe, 6480 New Hampshire Avenue Suite, 207B, Tacoma Park, Maryland, 20912. 
office phone 301-270-0018. Cell phone 240-644-3977. And you can reach us at our website, expressdrivingeducation.com. Medical practice software is too old. Indeed, all the programs are built on mumps, technology of the 1950s, and the programs cost too much money. Epic and Cerner cost billions of dollars. Meditech costs thousands of dollars too. In fact, that's why we created AlexiHTC.com, a new and free EMR slash EHR for doctors. AlexiaHTC.com is built for HIPAA, Yes, magical one-screen technology, ease of use, quick charting, amazing e-prescribing, tight labs integration, multi-office difference, because we believe doctors and patients need a break today. Be the first to test drive AlexiHTC.com. You have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. Act now. Call 240-350-1131. Alexia Care Corporation at AlexiaHTC.com. Unique Auto Repair. This is uh, a brother from Ghana. His name is uh, Emmanuel Ofori. He has a good business and uh, he repairs cars. He repairs all type of cars. Mercedes, Toyota, Honda, you name it. The brother does it. He repairs everything. So even if you buy a car from the auction and you need to get it fixed, Go to Emmanuel Ofori, Unique Auto Repair. He will repair this for you. It's very, very good. He has repaired my cars for me many times, and I love the service. And if you mention my name, Prince Ojong, he will give you even something also. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today. <laughs>